My postcard today is from one of the most famous cities, not just in Britain, but the whole world. One of the most dynamic cities in the west of England. We're in the city and county of Bristol. This is one of the rarest and most impeccable examples of English Art Nouveau that you're ever likely to see. This magnificent facade is a fine example of English Art Nouveau. When the building was opened in 1901, the police had to control the huge numbers who flocked to see it. It was designed by Henry Williams to house Edward Everard's printing works. When you watch my postcard from the Winter Gardens in Blackpool, you'll see more of Everard's beauties hidden behind a sprinkler system. Here, thankfully, the current owners have them on display in their foyer. Well, this is all that remains of the Bristol city walls, the St John's Gate, and many royals have passed through the actual arch itself. Henry VII in 1486 and Elizabeth I in 1574. And now me! There are the figures of Brennus and Bellinus, the legendary founders of Bristol. This is Corn Street, for a very good reason. That's the Corn Exchange. These are one of four bronze nails, or trading tables. Mm -hmm. They stood inside the Corn Exchange there. So what used to happen was, the people would come in with their corn, and then once the money went down from the traders, then the traders could take their corn. And that's where you get the expression, paying on the nail. Now, that's the Christ Church on the corner of Broad Street. It's uh, very distinctive because it's got those two little quarter jacks there who do their hammering on the bell every quarter of an hour. Like you just heard. Nice to know someone's working, isn't it? Near this spot, for over 400 years, stood the medieval Bristol High Cross. And that was given to the city in commemoration of Edward III, giving Bristol its very special status. In 1373, he made Bristol a county. It's a county of a city, a county and a city. And that in itself is, is something which no other city in this country has ever held, that kind of unusual status. Well, the cross has now been moved and can be seen in Stourhead in Wiltshire. Why? Why don't they bring it back here? I've come along to the Grand Hotel here in Bristol because they've got a selection of fine old prints and I want to see them. There's that one there. Bristol Guildhall. The centre of Judge Jeffrey's bloody assizes. Pirating brought huge rewards and the infamous pirate Blackbeard was born in Bristol in the 17th century. He had 14 wives and was responsible for the death of over 2,000 people according to popular legend. Now, because of the high tides of the River Avon, the ships docked here had to be extra sturdy and goods had to be well tied down. This led to the saying, ship shape and Bristol fashion. By the late 18th century, the high rise and fall of the tidal Avon was becoming too problematic for the ever increasing size of ships and the harbour went into decline. One ship that was far too big for the tidal Avon was the famous SS Great Britain. When she was launched in 1843, the SS Great Britain was the largest ship in the world. She was built here in Bristol and designed by Isambard Kingdom Brunel.
In 1933, after an illustrious career as a passenger liner, the SS Great Britain was abandoned, beached on Sparrow Cove in the Falkland Islands, after a disastrous last trip as a coal-carrying cargo ship. She was used as a store ship, firstly for wool and later coal. She narrowly escaped being a target practice for the Navy and was left to rot in Sparrow Cove. Finally, after much wrangling and a generous donation by one Jack Haywood, the decision was made to restore her and return her to her original dry dock, the Great Western Dock, where she was constructed in 1839. And now on to another reminder of Bristol's maritime trading history, the wine and sherry industry. I went to meet Trudy Spencer from John Harvey and Sons to find out more about a trade that continues to thrive. Now we're in uh, what looks like an Elizabethan tavern, except we're under the streets. Um, and yet I know it's not artificial. So Trudy, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> we're right in the heart of Bristol, in the old medieval part. Um, you're absolutely right. All the pillars and beams came from one of the old Elizabethan pubs in the city centre. But we're actually based in Harvey's old wine cellars. And these cellars used to be the bottling lines for Harvey's Bristol Cream Sherry. And when we opened the cellars in the 60s, we thought it would be really nice to show what Bristol was like uh, in those days. So all the lovely oak panels, the beams and the pillars came from one of the old Elizabethan pubs right in the city centre. Because the whole town used to be a seaport. So it was full of old sailing ships, um, old sailors, and 500 pubs were in the city. Attached to this Bristol hostelry is a fine museum relating the city's history and sherry heritage. In 1831, a wealthy wine merchant held a 